Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today we're talking stamping. Perfect stamping. No, you can't be perfect. We can be pretty close, but we can't be perfect. Before we get started, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you like this style video, give it a thumbs up. Now, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you my favorite vellum stamping tip. I heard some people tell me in the comments that they struggle with vellum. I think I got a tip for you. All right, let's talk stamping. So today I'm only going to talk with two different types of ink. I'm going to talk about dye ink and I'm going to talk about pigment ink. Now, you're like, that's only two inks. That's a lot of our inks. I know that different companies make them. There's different names about them, um, things like that, but they're pretty much pigment and dye. Those are the two we're going to use most often. Now, I have seen some things that people do that really cause them to struggle with stamping. The first thing I want to talk to you about is blocks and the, and the stamp in relation to the block. So let me show you what I mean. So when I've taught classes and had people stamping in front of me where I could see, you know, how they stamp and things like, and their, and kind of their uh, habits with stamping, here's one I see a lot that can really cause you some trouble. So do you see how tiny this little radish stamp is? And I've got it on this big old stamp block. Let me show you something that can happen. And this can happen no matter how you ink. I'm a person who lays my stamp down and brings the ink to it. That is also a tip for you guys. And you see how I can do that without getting ink everywhere? But a lot of times when I see people stamp, they press it down. And even though they don't realize it, they're getting ink everywhere on that block. Now, you can stamp this without getting this ink on the page. I have done it. But sometimes it will transfer to the page. So let me show you. In this instance, it may be hard because I'm just stamping straight to like this page. But let me just see if I can make a mess with it a little bit. I got some ink up there. And honestly, I could erase that with my... Um, my sand eraser, but I'd rather not have this issue. Where I find this becomes more of an issue is when I hold my block like this, right? Or I hold my block so that the ink gets on my hand and I don't realize it. And then I've got it on my page as soon as I go to pick it up. See that? That All that excess ink is just too much. Let me show you how to get rid of that. Now I have to tell you, these are my favorite kinds of videos to film. I love to teach you tips and tricks to make your stamping and any of your projects better. So let me show you my, my first tip. Although, look at the ink on this one. I'm pretty sure that some stays on. Let me see if that'll come off. Yeah, that's a little bit of stays on that got on there from something. Check this out. Here's the thing you want to look at. Instead of putting this tiny stamp on this big O block, put this tiny stamp on a small block. That automatically takes some of the danger away, right? Then when you're inking it, this is another tip, okay? This is called kiss the ink. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your ink, either way you do it, to the stamp or the other way, and I want you to kiss it. Just kiss it. If you struggle with getting ink everywhere on your block, do it like this and just kiss that stamp. Just kiss it. You do not need to squish into that pad. As a matter of fact, that's another tip. You don't want to twist. When you twist into your ink pad, if you have a good juicy ink pad, which I hope that you do, but if you do, it's going to fill in all those little lines and it's going to give you a blob of a stamp. So we're going to kiss the ink there and then when we take it to our page, we're going to kiss it here as well. Another one of my tips, do you see how I'm holding this still? Don't wiggle, don't rock. There are techniques that rock and wiggle, but this is not one. Hold it still, let the ink transfer. I don't have to press too awful hard on these tiny stamps. All I really wanna do is make sure I get even pressure. So I'm gonna lift up and look at that perfect little radish. Much better than this one where I was over pressing. You can see how the top got kind of messy. Perfect little radish, right? Now let's talk about our bigger stamps. So like this guy right here. There's two reasons I wanna talk about him. Put him under here so you can see him. He's large and he has fine detail. Remember I told you don't twist? So many times I see people take their ink pad and twist it into the stamp like this, and all it does is squish. It's like um, it's like juicing a lemon and having all that juice go everywhere, okay? Kiss it. Tap it on. I shouldn't see ink anywhere but on the stamped image itself, and I want to do this so you can see what I'm doing. Straight up and down. Look how beautiful. That looks like I've stamped it already, right? There's no ink anywhere else. It's nice and clean. And now when I turn this over and I want to stamp it, I'm just going to press it down. And again, even pressure. I'm not over pressing. I just want to make sure every little bit of this stamp kisses the page. So you see how I'm just kind of rub, rub, rub. You can use tools and things like that. Look, if I'm, if I'm struggling, I'll just take a rag and do like this, but you wanna make sure every little bit of this stamp touches the page. And then when you peel it off, look at that gorgeous image. Kiss it. If you twist, you fill in all those little fine details. You don't wanna do that. 
All right, the other thing I wanna point out is I did that with pigment ink. Now, photopolymer, silicone, acrylic, it does not matter what stamp it is, even red rubber, it doesn't matter what stamp it is, pigment is probably gonna give you a better result most times. The reason for that is this is an ink that kind of clings to the stamp where with a dye ink, these are water-based, a lot of times they will pull up. Now on an image like this, this is a great stamp. A dye-based ink is perfect for an image like this because almost every time we get a good result because even if it pulls a little bit, the ink is still there enough to spread out when you kiss it to the page. With a thicker stamp, let's look at one of those. With something like this, you won't get the best results with dye. And the good thing about this is this. The place, let me say this before we even get to this, because there's a lot of confusing information in what I'm saying today, okay? I have a class on my channel, on my um, store at maymaymadeit.com. I want to say it's like $9.99 for this class. It's like a two-hour class. You can purchase it. It's all stamping. It's called Stamp Right Up. I'll link it in the description below. You will learn so much about stamping you didn't even realize you needed to know if you'll take that class. But in the meantime, here's what I want to tell you. We typically don't need to use a dye ink on an image like this. The reason is dye ink we use when we want to color something with alcohol markers, right? Because dye dyes the page. You'll learn all that in that class. With this one, I'm going to show you. I'm going to stamp it with this memento. Now, this is a stamp that I have used before, so I probably won't get a terrible, terrible result. But I'm doing the best I can to ink it up, and I want to show you this. Do you see how it's not solidly inked? A lot of that has to do with I'm using an ink that is water-based. So now we'll take it to the page and stamp it. Again, I want to do the same thing. I want to get even pressure. But even if I get even pressure on a stamp on an image like this, I'm going to struggle getting a good image because there wasn't enough ink to do it. So you see how it looks? Now, I don't stress about that because these exist. <laughs> These guys are great. Get you a memento marker. All of the stuff I'm using today, I'll link in the description below as well. Get you a memento marker. Fill in any holes. If you don't want to do this, let me show you what else you can do. Go to your pigment ink. Now, I'm going to get another scrap because we've used that one a good bit. Now, go to your pigment ink for this. Because I'm not going to be coloring this solid image, I can stamp it with pigment and get a better result. Okay, so I'm going to my pigment and I'm gonna ink this up. Now, I also like to sit it on top. Do you see how it's sitting on this white paper? I can see what's happening to my ink here. Let me bring this up. You see how much fuller that is? Now, you're seeing what looks like spots, but it's not. It's fully coated. Let's turn around and see if you can tell. It's fully coated, but where it's really wet, you can see what looks like light, but it's not. So, I'm gonna stick this down, press again, get good even coverage, and then lift it up and look how much better. Now, do I have some little spots? I do, but those are easily taken care of, easily taken care of because they're just little spots. And another trick is sometimes you don't even have to color all of them in to get rid of that. Sometimes you just hit a few and they kind of just go away. So that ink will dry and it'll blend together. Now, you clearly saw how much better this was and I only stamped it one time because the pigment is gonna cling to these guys better. The other thing I will tell you is this, the more you use these, the better they get. So let's look at that. So I stamped it one time with pigment and you saw how it looked. Let's do it again. What happens is photopolymer stamps are porous. This is why your stamps change color on you, um, especially depending on the ink you use. I don't use a lot of inks that turn my stamps color because I'm not a big fan of that, but it can happen, okay? It can change the color. Um, but because they're porous, oh, look beautiful, right? So the more you go, the better you get. And the more you season the stamp by using it, the better it will get. Those pores will fill in and more and more you'll have less splotch. Now, people say that you can use Versamark. Let me show you my Versamark pad. Do I have one in here? Hmm. Yeah, I do. Hang on. So Versamark is a watermark ink, but the cool thing about it is it's like an oil or glycerin base. I really don't remember. I never can remember the base of this thing. But because of that, it works a lot like the pigment, but even more rich. Why am I holding them upside down? But even more rich. And a lot of people tell you if you're having trouble with splotchy images, okay, ink it with Versamark first. Basically, use it like a primer. You see what I'm saying? Then ink it with this 
and it will do better. Some people will tell, and I, I don't necessarily, I just say keep stamping. Stamp it off and then stamp it where you want it, right? But a lot of people will tell you to put the Versamark on first and then put your pigment ink on top. You can do that, try that. There's lots of different ways to do it. Honestly, the more you use a stamp, the better. Something that I think is really neat is what Shannon does is when she's stamping, because she's not real confident in her stamping yet, she does a great job, but she's just started stamping. She keeps a scrap page beside her and she will ink up and stamp off and ink up and stamp off until she likes it. And then she takes it to her project. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not gonna waste that much ink doing that. And honestly, sometimes you end up with something like this that you can use and you can just cut it out and use it anyway. So that is the difference in your dyes and your pigments and using fine line images and these bolder images. So my opinion, fine line images, dye ink are perfect, bolder images, pigment. Now I say all that to also tell you, you're like, yeah, but you contradict yourself because you say to use pigment for your sentiments. I do like pigment ink for my sentiments. Here's the reason. I know I'm not gonna color my sentiments, so I would use this because I get such a beautiful, rich, crisp stamp. So yes, if I'm doing sentiments, words, things like that, I like to use my pigment, but anytime you're gonna be coloring, you gotta use something that won't smear with your alcohol markers, right? Okay, let's look at something else. I've told you, I'm looking at my list here, I've told you about the right size block. Let me tell you something else about that. So if you have a Misty, okay, I have um, seen this happen where this is a mistake. So you've got this misty, you've got all this surface, right? So if you're gonna use this to stamp, I know you can hardly see it. Let me get this where you see. So if I'm gonna put a little stamp here, let's say I put this little pumpkin. Here's a little pumpkin. I'll stick it here in the side, okay? I have this little pumpkin, I'm gonna ink it up. The same principle counts here, okay? You still want to make sure you are kissing the stamp and only the stamp. If you do this number, where you get ink on the page, you're either gonna have to clean that off before you stamp, or you take a chance of it getting on your project. Let me show you. So this is a, this is a card base, all right? Let me move this where you can see. Just give me a second. So this is a card base, which means it's a little thicker than just a piece of cardstock, okay? So I'm gonna place this card base in, and put a little magnet on it. But this is a little thick, okay? So it's taking up some space. Now I could open it up and hang it out, but I'm doing this to show you the mistake that can happen. Then you bring this guy over. Now, a lot of people overpress the Misty. I see people taking their heel and like really pressing and pressing or taking like a tool and really, really pressing. If you overpress and you have ink like this, you take every chance of getting ink around it. Why this doesn't happen when I'm filming, I promise you I would get ink on here if I was not filming. But I will show you this, my image, I overpressed it and it kind of flattened out. You see how it looks? How it's got a halo? That's from overpressing. That happens with regular blocks too. But again, the more ink you have where you don't want it, the more ink you're gonna get where you don't want it. That's a good way to put it. So make sure the ink is only where you want it. So let me clean this off. Um, that's just something I see and the dirtier, let me say this, the dirtier your hands get, the dirtier your tools get, the dirtier your projects will get. I say that from experience. Look at my hands. <laughs> Look, do what I do. Wait, do what I say, do not what I do. Something like that. All right, let's talk. Let me look. All right, this is a mouse pad. It's my husband's. I took it from him. It's, it's cameras that he uses. That's why it's got that logo. We'll cover it up. Here's a mouse pad, okay? Some people tell me they need to stamp on foam or a mouse pad. I do not. The only time I stamp on foam or something that's like that is when I use my Misty, and that's because it's in there to fill the space. I don't need a mouse pad, but some people do. Let me show you one of the little bits that can be kind of a hiccup with a mouse pad. All right, I put a pumpkin on here. I'm gonna ink it up. Now, with a mouse pad, look, I got ink on my finger. That's another thing. Be careful for touching your ink pad. If I press, I don't want to use this whole scrap. Let's go like this. If I overpress on a mouse pad, watch what can happen. Do you see how chubby my line looks? And I've kind of got that halo right there. And especially if I over inked my stamp. Let me over ink. Can I do that? It's been so long. That's one thing I wanted to tell you on the beginning. It's I'm kind of good at these techniques because I've trained myself. But you, so if I look like I'm exaggerating, I kind of am because I'm going against what I know. Look how much ink is on there because I twisted it. That's a lot of ink. It ran all the way in. You can see it running up the side. See that? Now watch. Mouse pad over press. Oh my goodness. Are you getting results like this? We don't want results like that. We want results 
more like this, but even better than that. Let me show you. So I'm going to get rid of the mouse pad because I don't think we need it. Okay. I think it kind of hinders us. Here's what we do. This is probably going to be messy. Let me clean this ink off because there's still ink on the sides. Another thing, when you're cleaning, use a lint-free cloth. Okay. You can use your squeaky clean or whatever, but don't use a paper towel on your stamps. Be careful with your baby wipes. Baby wipes work really well when they're really wet, but once they start to dry, they can deposit lint and it is nothing but a mess then. Okay, so let me show you. We're going to kiss it. We're going to stamp it. Now, instead of over pressing, like I'm going to lift my hand up, instead of, like, let me show you this. I'm not even going to press and let's lift up and see what we get. That's with no pressure. I did not press, okay? Now let me do a little bit of pressure like I do. I'm going to sit this guy down and I'm gonna put even pressure here and there. No over pressing, and look at that. Such a difference. Let me cut these apart so you can see both of them at the same time. Such a difference in the way that turns out. So, mouse pad cleanly inked but over pressed. Mouse pad with twisted ink over pressed. No mouse pad, no pressure, and no mouse pad, a little bit of pressure. Can you see how this stuff matters? I also wanna show you, do you see the ink in the middle? That's because I overpressed, I twisted the ink. That can also happen, check this out. If I take my ink to my stamp, now this is a hard one for it to happen to, but if you have a bigger one, you can see this, and I use the corner of the pad, watch this. If I use the corner of the ink pad, it can land inside of my stamp. That is begging to be on my page. That's why when you're stamping, this is another tip, let me show you. When you're stamping, I love teaching this stuff. This is my favorite thing to do. Stamping is so fun. Like, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, but once we get the feel of it, it's so fun. Imagine this is laying on my work surface, and imagine this is me lifting it to my work surface. Watch what I'm going to do here. I want to make sure this pad covers the whole pumpkin. So, rather than just going halfway, 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 I'm going to take my ink pad and basically sit it. So, that's what I'm doing when it's on the surface, is I'm sitting the entire thing like this, right? That keeps me from getting ink in the middle. I'll tell you something else. Once you've gotten ink in the middle of the stamp, you really need to stop and clean it because that will probably always leave some deposit on your page if you're not careful. Okay, I feel like that was a lot of information. I want to tell you about vellum. <laughs> this is one people ask, and I discovered this not too long ago, so let me show you my tip. So let's talk about vellum and the ink we use on it. First, I want to tell you this. This um, ink is called Stays On, and it does just that. It stays on. It is a solvent ink, so it is made for porous surfaces. So many times we make a mistake, and we try to use this everywhere. It's not needed everywhere. You don't need it for cardstock or anything that is non that is porous. You want this on things like vellum, acetate, glass, rock, or stone, even those things that you want it to stay on permanently, but not regular paper projects. I made the mistake when I first started stamping of thinking, oh, I want this because it stays on, which makes sense. But no, this is where you want it in these sort of um, instances. Now, this tape, yellow tape, the most amazing stuff. What you do, first off, if you have a misty or a stamp positioner, use that for vellum and you don't have to do this step. But a lot of you guys don't have those, so I'm going to show you what I do when I don't have one of those. Take some of this tape. This is a piece I've already used. I'm going to reuse it. And I'm going to take my vellum or my acetate or whatever my non-porous non item is and tape it to my work surface, okay? Then my next trick is to use a positioner with rubber feet. The reason we struggle with vellum is because once we've inked up our stamp, it almost feels as though we are getting like static or water between the image and the vellum and it wants to twist. And even if it twists just a slight little bit, it'll give you kind of a halo effect on your stamp and it's frustrating. But these rubber feet will do away with that. By the way, did I tell you I have this stuff linked below? I have it linked for you guys. So I'm gonna take the stays on. And the only thing is if you're not gonna use a positioner, you can't restamp this. You know what I'm saying? If you're not using your misty or whatever, you can't stamp this twice. You got to try to really make sure you get good ink coverage the first time around and you spend some time on your stamp. So I'm going to make sure I get really good ink coverage. And then I'm just going to make sure I stamp really, really well. I feel like that's good and covered. Okay. Stays on smells delicious, by the way. Okay. When we sit this down, the feet allow us to not touch the vellum until we're ready. The feet lift this up. Okay, that's the beauty of having these little feet. 
Now, when we're ready to stamp it, I'm gonna put my lid on this because I know I will put my arm in this stays on and that does not come off. Now we're ready to stamp it, we press down and the little feet are gonna keep us still. Not the paper, not our hand, the feet are keeping us still. So all we have to do then is work the stamp. Now something I like to do, especially when I'm doing this, is take a cloth and rub over this bit. Would you ever be this rough when you're stamping vellum? No, because you know this stamp would slide all over the place. But with the, with the vellum taped down and with my feet holding my block in place, I'm not gonna get the slip, okay? So now I'm gonna lift this off. And look at that beautiful image. Now, I'm gonna show you this up close, because listen, you would not get this normally. You know it, if you use vellum and you struggle with it, this is not a result that you would get every time. Look at the crisp, sharp image that I got. I was a little, a little weak right there. But the reason this is, is because I taped my vellum down and I used my block with the feet so that it wouldn't wiggle. It's the coolest thing. Listen, I did not like to stamp vellum or acetate or any of that because it always made a mess for me. It always smeared, but this works perfect. So get yourself one of these with the rubber feet. That's what you want. All right, that's my tips. I think that the vellum tip was the best one. <laughs> not really, it depends. I just want you to have these tips in your arsenal so that when you're stamping, you can feel confident in your stamping and you can get good results. You're never gonna stamp perfectly. I don't care what anybody says, I don't stamp perfectly. You're not gonna stamp perfectly. You're not going to. We do well, we don't do perfect, right? We have fun, we don't do perfect. So I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you guys so much for um, the response to my video that I did about the backgrounds and showing you guys the different kind of backgrounds. You really love that. So I'm hoping this is another video that you'll really pick up on and like. And let me know what other things you wanna see tips on, tips and tricks on. So here's what I need you to do. Hit that subscribe button, become a subscriber. If you like this, give me a big old thumbs up, a big old inky one, big old inky thumbs up. And don't forget to head to our customer gallery for inspiration. You can put your photos there or you can get inspired from it. We have like over 2000 posts on our customer gallery. It's like our very own Pinterest. It's at maymaymadeit.com and you just click customer gallery and it'll take you there. Thanks so much for being here today, guys. And until next time, bye now.